Welcome to this LiDAR 360 tutorial. Today we will be focusing on a workflow that can be used to extract DBH measurements from individual trees found in forest LiDAR data using the TLS seed point editor function in version 4.0 of the software. To begin, launch LiDAR 360 and load the terrestrial LiDAR survey TLS point cloud data into a new project. Before this TLS data can serve as an input to functions found in the forest module, it must be pre-processed. In this pre-processing routine, we will first remove outliers, then we will classify ground points, and lastly, we will use the ground classified points to normalize the heights of the individual trees and other surface features. Now go on the data management toolbox, select remove outliers from the point cloud tools. Here you will just accept the default parameters and click OK to run the tool. As this process completes, let me tell you a little more about what this tool can achieve and how it works. The Outlier Removal tool aims to remove noise or error in a point cloud and thereby improve data's quality. The tool can be used to reduce or eliminate both high and low level gross errors. The algorithm behind the tool will first search for each point's neighboring points within a user-defined area and calculate the average distance from each point to its neighboring points. Then, the mean and standard deviation of these average distances for all points are calculated. If the average distance of a point to its nearest neighbors is larger than a maximum user-defined distance, expressed as a multiple of standard deviations from the mean average distance between each point and a set number of its nearest points, then that point will be considered as an outlier and gets removed from the set of points included in the tool's outputs. After outliers have been filtered out of the data and the result of the previous step is added to the LiDAR 360 project, let's remove the original input data layer to prevent any confusion during subsequent data processing steps. Now, let's identify ground points in the forest LiDAR data. To do this, open the filter ground points tool found in the TLS forest toolbox. For this input point cloud, we can set both the grid size and ground thickness parameter values to be 10 centimeters. All other settings can be left as default, and we can go ahead and click OK. Once the function is finished, we can change the rendering to a display by classification mode and make sure that only the ground points are selected to see so that we can examine the results of the completed filter ground points routine. In the final processing step, we will use one of the normalization tools found in LiDAR360 to remove the effects of topographic relief on the elevation values of non-ground or surface points. The normalization process is performed by subtracting the terrain elevation, which in this case will be taken to be the elevation of the closest ground point to each non-ground point's z or height value the output of this function is similar to another function found in LiDAR 360, which can also normalize ground points, but uses a rasterized bare earth model, or digital elevation model, DEM, as the reference ground surface rather than a classified point cloud. To carry out the normalization operation, select the Normalize by Ground Points tool from the Point Cloud Tools section of the Data Management Toolbox. Click OK to run, and after the tool completes, add the result to the LiDAR360 project and remove the input point cloud from the list of project layers. With the pre-processing of the terrestrial LiDAR data complete, we can now move on to using the TLS Forest Modules tools for extracting diameter at breast height, or DBH, measurements from individual trees found in our input data set. Launch the TLS seed point editor from the TLS Forest toolbox. On the TLS seed point editor toolbar, go to Editor and then choose Start Edit. Make sure the normalized point cloud is selected and then click OK. In the setting window that pops up, leave both parameter and display settings as their default values and click OK. Click on the batch extraction DBH tool. Leave the minimum points number value set to 10 and click OK to automatically fit DBH measurement circles to candidate trees identified by the software. Fitted DBH values will then be displayed in the viewer. The color of the circle represents the confidence level of this fitted DBH measurement object. 
The integer value displayed next to each circle represents the corresponding seed point number, and the extracted dBH value is also shown here in meter units next to each circle. Now, let's try to identify false positives as well as poorly fitted dBH measurements in the outputs. Click on filter trees and set the confidence level to low and middle before hitting apply. Draw a hexagonal 3D profile using the TLS seed point editors profile tool around a single tree to examine how well the fitted dbh circle aligns with a single tree stem at breast height. Once you identify a dbh measurement that has been erroneously fit to a section of the point cloud, the next step is to delete the seed point from which the measurement was generated. Switch the data selection target type to be seed points. Then, use the selection tools to choose the incorrectly placed seed point either in the main or profile view window. The selected seed point will then change color and be displayed in Cayenne. Then, press the delete seed point icon or hit the delete key on your keyboard to remove the selected seed point. As an alternative to deleting seed points belonging to fitted dbh values having low or middle levels of confidence, users can choose to remove all of them at once using the tree filter interface and choosing the delete option before checking low and middle and then clicking the apply button. There may be instances where individual trees were simply missed by the batch dbh extraction tool or fitted measurements were generated for trees but due to their unacceptable levels of confidence in their fits had to be removed. Fortunately, there are tools in LiDAR360 to help us remedy these situations through manual intervention. Here we have a portion of the point cloud where no dbh measurement exists for what is truly an individual tree in a forest LiDAR dataset. This is a false negative error type that can be rectified by first switching the selection target type from seed point to point cloud and then using the circle selection tool to choose the subset of points believed to represent the horizontal extents of the tree stem at breast height. There is a branch or another object up against the tree stem at this elevation above the ground and we can also make a decent estimate of where the tree stem's outer surface actually extends to within this clustering of points. Selected points will be highlighted in red. We can then right click on the display and choose the fit dbh option. Here you see this results in the creation of a new diameter measurement which was fit to the selected points. The color of the fitted dbh object is yellow which means a high level of statistical confidence exists in this measured value. We can then use the pan profile tool to navigate about the profile view window and remove commission and omission errors in the set of automatically extracted dbh values. Once we are satisfied with our fitted dbh values, we can save the seed points file we just created as a CSV file. This saving option can be found under the editor drop down menu where users also have the option of loading an existing seed points file. Once a seed point file has been saved, we can end our editing session and close out of the TLS seed points editor. We will now load the newly created CSV file into our LiDAR360 project as a table and identify it as point type data. Our seed points will then be displayed in the viewer as 3D points. Our seed points will then be displayed in the viewer as 3D points. We can right click on the CSV file name under the table layers section of our project window and choose table attribute to view the records. You will see that each seed point, or row entry, has five columns associated with it, which are labeled tree ID, tree location X, tree location Y, tree location Z, and dbh. This seed point's CSV file can now be used as an input to the point cloud segmentation tool found in LiDAR360's TLS Forest module. Thank you for watching, and please be sure to check out Green Valley's YouTube page for more LiDAR360 tutorials.